What's the word, y'all? I'm finally home for Vegas Summer League, and I gotta say, 2023 was different than any other year I've ever been at. Because when you have a guy like Wimby, who, who's supposed to be a generational talent, you know that everybody's gonna beat him. And again, they're saying that Wimby is the best draft prospect, maybe in the history of team sports. The best NBA draft prospect since LeBron James. And again, I want to remind people, that is saying a lot. I was around when Anthony Davis was coming out of college and how much hype was around AD. I was around with Zion just a few years ago and all the hype around Zion. Wimby had the gyms feeling differently than ever before. But before we get into all things that I went through in this last couple days of Summer League, let me tell you about my newsletter, the Enjoy Basketball Newsletter. I created this because I know it is hard to kind of keep up with all things NBA unless you're on Twitter 24-7, which I don't recommend. Monday, Wednesday, Fridays, we are dropping things, and these are just some cool stories. So this is the first one to drop since Summer League started. So we got some write-ups on Jordan Walsh, who had a crazy first game. They said he couldn't score, and then he came out there and dropped 18, and he was hitting shots. Case and Wallace hit, what, six made threes and then Keontae George might be the best looking offensive rookie in the class through the first two or three summer league games it's completely free to sign up it goes to your email Monday Wednesday Friday uh, we even got some W coverage on Friday so I'm just saying if you ain't locked in you should be hit the link in the description so of course we got to start off with Victor Wimiyama because he was the first overall pick and again the gym was completely different um, I've been there for the last couple seasons I've never seen it sold out before like, I go there with the media badge, and shout out to our employer, Bleach Report, for getting us that opportunity. And it allows us to go on the floor, kind of sit in the tunnels. We basically have all access. When Wimby's game started, they said, uh-uh, that pass don't get you down here no more. You got to go up there and fantasy. And I, re I was respecting it because it was just so much going on. There was so much TV coverage. There were so many cameras. They're like, man, you got to go find your seat. So we did. But every other game of the weekend... Didn't matter. <laughs> we was on them courts, you know what I'm saying? But Wimby had the gym different. Now, I do want to say, of course, that first game was extremely underwhelming. Like, it kind of sucked the energy out of the, the air. Because you coming off the game with Jabari Smith Jr. hit the, like, game winner. And then go immediately into Wimby. you like, hey, this might be the best ball we're going to see all weekend. And then that game versus Brandon Miller, what was it, 76 to 64? It was a college basketball type game. And Wimby struggled. And things weren't looking good. And I saw a lot of think pieces already. On Victor Wibanyama through the first game of his professional NBA career. Now, when I go to some leagues, I'm genuinely just going because I love the game of basketball and I want to enjoy these things. I'm never walking out of a gym with a think piece about a player, a rookie specifically, after a couple bad games, one bad game, six bad games, because it doesn't really translate. We've seen players go to the summer league and dominate, completely dominate. And then go to the league and not really have that translate. Or vice versa. We're great players. Players that had great NBA careers going to summer league in their rookie season, their sophomore season, and don't do anything. So when I see all these things about Brandon Miller, again, I don't know what's going to happen in Brandon Miller's career. I'm not here to project. But, like, the fact that he's struggling in the summer league doesn't necessarily mean he's going to struggle at the NBA level. Even walking out of game number one for Wimby, I, I was talking about how he did a lot of things great where, like, I thought he, I think he's going to benefit greatly for added spacing. Now, it's not like the Spurs have this crazy amount of shooting on their regular roster, but just actual NBA spacing is going to help him a ton. Because anytime he put the ball on the floor, they would collapse. Anytime he touched the ball, they was doubling, you know what I'm saying? And he showed the playmaking chops. He didn't end up with a ton of assists because, again, G League talent, Summer League talent, so a lot of missed shots. But I saw a lot of great things walking out of that first game. And a lot of those games or those things that I saw translated to game number two where you're like, oh, yeah. Th th this is the guy. This is the reason why he was drafted as high as he is. I'm walking around Summer League, and uh, I get the notification that Greg Popovich is re-signed for five more years. When is it going to end, Pop? I wonder, and this, I, I wonder if he would have signed this contract if the Spurs didn't end up with the first overall pick. Because it feels like for the last couple of seasons, we've been waiting for... Not, not necessarily like waiting for because we want to keep popping the game, but just expecting that he's going to walk away eventually because he's the oldest coach in the NBA right now. So I wonder if they ended up getting a fourth overall pick versus the first overall pick. Would he have still been there for five additional seasons? I don't really know, but I bet he saw that set game. He's like, yeah, 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 this is the one. I always recommend it to NBA fans to try to get to Vegas Summer League at least one time in their lives because it is 100% worth it. And I, I specifically recommend that you go to the first weekend, not the second weekend, because, as you can see, uh, Vic is already shut down after two games. Scoo Henderson got injured. I don't know if he'll ever come back. I mean, Thompson got injured. I don't know if he'll come back. So it's like you want to be there for the first appearances because you don't know what's going to happen on the back end of Summer League. Speaking of Scoop, looked like a man amongst boys in that first Summer League game. And, yeah, again, he did get injured, what, three quarters into it. But he showed everything he needed to show. 
Um, again, I don't think that it necessarily translates from the NBA or summer league to the NBA, but some things do. And Scoop showed that a lot of those things will probably translate. I more look at summer league for the year two guys because I feel like once you have a full season under your belt, when you go into summer league that second year, I don't expect you to dominate, but I want you to look like you are a professional basketball player versus players who haven't had that experience. And we saw that with Jabari Smith Jr. He has been the most impressive sophomore year player of the class so far. And that's coming off the first quarter of that first game. We, we watching it and me and the guys looking at each other like, Bari don't look good. And then second quarter since then, for the, the end of the first game, we hit the game when he ended up with 30 plus points. And in game number two, we ended up with 30 plus points again. He looks too good to beat him. Last year was Josh Giddy. And the first game of Summer League was hey, the Utah Summer League, Sacramento Summer League. It was J-Dub. And now it is Jabari Smith Jr. looking leagues ahead of the competition. And you add that with the Thompson twin and Tari Eason, who both also looked really, really good in, they, in their amount of play. The, the Rockets got some interesting stuff. Did I mention Cam Whitmore? The Rockets, at the very least, going to be a team worth watching this season. And I can't say that had been the case for the last couple seasons. With Cam, and again, there's so much, so many players over there that, that are warranted of minutes, so I don't know exactly. Is Cam going to get 25 minutes per game? Is he going to get more? Is he going to get less? I don't know. Between Cam, Tari, Bari, Jalen Green, Alperin, there are just so many young, fun, talented players on this team. And now we got some older dudes to kind of show them the raps with Fred Van Vliet, Dylan Brooks, who say what you want about the contracts, and then Uncle Jeff Green. And then the coach and Ime Udoka, I'm excited for Houston Rockets basketball. And I haven't been able to say that over the last couple seasons, but it's happening. Last year, I called them the winner of the draft. I mean, one of the winners of the draft because Tari Eason was my favorite prospect in that entire draft class. He was. The year before that, I said the same thing because Alperin Shingun, after what I think the OKC Thunder drafted him, they traded for him. He was my favorite prospect. <laughs> he was my favorite prospect in that year's draft. And now this year to have Cam fall all the way down to 20. And again, I've mentioned here on, on the show before, I have nothing but high hopes for the Thompson Twins. I've never rooted for individual players more than I'm rooting for the Thompson Twins collectively. So like, every single year over the last three seasons, they've done something in the draft that I absolutely love. And now it's time to start putting it together. Putting it together for them don't mean they're going to drop to 40 wins or 50 wins, but just progression. I think we might see that this season. I say that. We're letting you know again for the hundredth time on this channel that I'm not a guy that watches a lot of college basketball, international basketball, OTE, G League. Like, that's not really my forte. I'm an NBA guy, as you know. But this year was a little bit different than other seasons because we had to do like this live draft show and I refused to go to work unprepared. So I did more research this year than any other year. And I, I enjoyed Keontae George's game in college when I was going through my, my tapings and going through my research. I didn't expect him to jump on the scene and look this ridiculous. We talk about how Bari looked leagues ahead of his competition as a sophomore year player. Right now, Keontae George has done that through the first two games of his career. And I, did, I didn't expect that. I didn't expect that. Not, not that I didn't expect him to be good, but I didn't expect him to be good this fast. And the, screen on, the screen lock on his phone is all the weaknesses slash cons the draft experts said about him. And that is his motivation. I love stuff like that, right? So they said that uh, he couldn't play make at a high level. Boom, he's averaging eight and a half assists per game in the two games that he's played in summer league. They said he his jumps, his three-point shot might not be as consistent as it should be. He's averaging 12 and a half attempts from three, and he's shooting 44%. Again, I don't know how good this translates to the actual league, but this is incredible play from Keontae. Some like sleeper guys like um, Leonard Miller has been really, really impressive to me. The defense was already a thing, and you showing me that he he does have the tools to score at the next level. That's fun. I also really like to see players experiment, especially if you're going into year number two. Like Jalen Duran in his first summer league game this season, attempted, I think, three threes, and he hit one, and he did not attempt a three his, his entire rookie season. Or a guy like Dyson Daniels, who so far has not shot it well in summer league, but he's getting a lot of attempts up trying to get those reps. Because again, for a guy like Dyson, it is imperative that he becomes an at least decent three-point shooter in order to be like a part of the real, real rotation over there in New Orleans. Again, we're only a couple games into it, so I'm sure some more people will stand out um, as we continue on this journey. But summer league is always just so fun. Again, I recommend everybody to try to get there at least once. I've met so many viewers and supporters of the channel, which is always the most fun thing 
Um, and I met so many NBA players that show love too, which again is so weird when people come up to me and say, hey, I've been watching you forever and now they're in the league. You know what I'm saying? So I appreciate all the support as always. And now that I am finally home from this stuff and I don't have a trip for a while, the content will be back, man. It's, it's, it's too much to talk about and I, I'm going to be here for it.